Welcome to the third part of the Puzzle Cube project video tutorial. In this part, we're going to take this cube, we're going to render it, and we're also going to explode it. So if you're starting this part, you should have your Puzzle Cube completed up till this point. Now before we move any further, you're going to want to check all your parts and make sure that everything has been fully constrained. What that means is, if you grab any single part of this puzzle cube and you shake it around, nothing should fall apart. If a piece breaks off, that means, oh, there we go, that means something hasn't been fully constrained, and that can cause problems later on. So we're going to fully constrain this last piece. I'm just going to throw a mate. I'm going to glue that side to this side. Uh, when you hear that cl click, it's an, it's an awesome sound. And now this cube has been fully constrained. So let's go ahead, save it, go to I, save. And then you're going to want to, after you've saved it, go to I, new. And we're going to move down. We've done, we've created parts, we've created an assembly. We're going to head over to the presentation. And this creates an exploded projection, which is that explosion I was talking about. And I'm going to double click on this, and it's going to take you to a blank screen. Now, if the cube was the last thing you worked on, and you saved everything to a folder for the cube project, when you click on this button up here, Create View, it should have the puzzle cube already loaded in. If, for however reason, it doesn't, you're going to have to go ahead and search for it depending on where you saved it to. But luckily for me, I saved it to a folder and it's already there. So if I click OK, it's going to go ahead and put the puzzle cube into this presentation file. Presentation files are used for animating. So we got our awesome cube. Next we're going to want uh, one of the pieces to break off first. So what I usually do is I find a piece that isn't being restricted in any way. So let's say this pink piece up here, and we're going to go to Tweak Components, and when you click on Tweak Components, you're going to get a series of options. And you'll also notice that if you hover your mouse over the puzzle cube, an XYZ axis shows up. And it's a little hard to see, but there is definitely an XYZ axis showing up. I'm going to click on one of the parts of the puzzle cube. So I'm going to click, let's say, on the pink part, since that's the one I'm moving first. And you'll notice that the XYZ is now locked in place. Now this is where you have to be very careful, because Inventor isn't the greatest at animating things, and it's very finicky if you don't do it exactly how Inventor wants you to do it. So right now, I can only animate this pink shape or this pink block in the Z axis. The Z is highlight blue. If for whatever reason I wanted it to move on the X axis or go in this direction, I can use these options and I'll switch it to X. You'll notice that the X switched to blue. Or if I wanted to move it along the Y axis and go in that direction, I can switch it in Y and now I can move it in the Y direction. Alternatively, you can rotate anything in Inventor by switching to the rotation option. And now you'll notice that a counterclockwise or a clockwise roll wheel has shown up on the XYZ and you could re rotate this part. So if you wanted rotation in your animation, you could do that as well. So I haven't clicked on anything. All, all I've done is put down that axis. I'm going to switch it back to linear transformation. So I'm going to click back at this option. And for this part, I want to move it on to Z. So I'm going to switch to Z. And now, this is where you have to keep track of a few things. Since I've already clicked on this cube, I need to click on this cube, this cube, this cube, this cube. And the final cube, once you click on it, you have to drag the entire shape in the direction you want it to move in. So I'm going to click on this one and then drag it up. And you'll notice right away that I messed up. Not a big deal. So I'm going to go ahead, click uh, the X over here. I'm going to undo that. 
and let me try that one more time. So I think I got to click on this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and on the last one, click and drag up. There we go. And let it go, and then click close. So that's one. If you head over to the animate option over here, click on that, and then click uh, animate, you'll notice that the puzzle cube can now animate itself. And later on we're going to spend a lot of time trying to get things to animate nicely. But for this project we're just working with the simple, simplest of animations. So that's awesome. That's one part done. Let's find another part. Let's say this blue part and we're going to go back to tweak components. I'm going to click on the blue. I do want it to move on the z-axis. So I'm going to go this one, this one, this one, this one. And on the last one I'm going to click it and drag it. And you'll notice there was a blue piece I forgot back here. So I'm going to actually cancel that and undo that. And I'm going to go for the green piece instead. Or uh, let's go for the black piece. Click on that. And then this, 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 this. And this. Pull that apart. And click close. And now you should have two pieces animating. Which is pretty cool. Now, you might be wondering why I click close every time, and I'll show you. If you go to Tweak Components, and let's say you choose the blue, and you select these parts, whoops, and I, let me redo that. And you select these parts, and I want it to move on the Y axis, so I'm going to switch it over to Y and you move the blue part off and then you just decide to select a different part so let's say I select the green part you try to move the green part on let's say the x-axis you're gonna move both parts together which is awesome if you want to create complex animations but for this project it's not really necessary so I'm gonna cancel I'm going to undo it back to the point where the blue's back on there. And I'm going to wrap up this by doing one part at a time. And I mess that up again. Like I said, uh, animations with Inventor, a little finicky. And I wish there was a better way to do it. And if you know or figure out a better way, please let me know. And let's do the green part. And last but not least, the red part. So luckily for me, it all turned out to be Z, Z axes, but it might not for you. So remember, you can switch your options over here. Okay, that looks like a sweet explosion. Let's go over, go over to animate. Let's hit reverse play. And if it's been done correctly, the puzzle cube should be able to take itself apart. So for all those visual learners out there, this is a great way to show them how to put your cube together. So with that done, go ahead and save this into your folder with all the other uh, all the other components. I'll call this an explosion. And save that. Now, let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'm going to close this out and back in our assembly, so this is my assembly, I just closed the tab that had the presentation, but if you'd like you can also open up your assembly again. We're going to take this normal looking puzzle cube, which looks awesome, and we're going to make it kind of artistic. So if we're trying to sell this product to somebody, it's going to look the part. So in order to do that, let's first separate everything that makes this a puzzle cube. So in order to do that, let me just position it nicely, we're going to select this option here which is called free move, and then, oh this is under the assemble tab, and you're going to grab each part and you're going to move it away from the other parts. 
So you'll notice that like rubber band kind of being built around it. Okay, something like that. Now that looks very nice, but the parts are still kind of hard to see. So now we're going to switch over to the free rotate tool. And kind of think of the free rotate tool as something you have to dip a paintbrush into every time you use it. So I'm going to click free rotate. I'm going to select the blue part. I'm going to rotate it so that I can see it more clearly. Let's say like this. And then I'm going to switch from free rotate back to free move and then back to free rotate. It's like I dipped my brush and now I'm going to select the black part and I'm going to rotate that and then I'm going to dip my brush, free move, free rotate. I'm going to select the red part, rotate that in some cool way. For free move, free rotate. Grab the green part, rotate that. Free move, free rotate. And then grab the pink part and move that. And then one last free move, free rotate. Now, your project's in a very unstable form right now because all these constraints want to kick in. So it's important that you do not touch these parts until we're done now. We've altered them and they will hold their position as long as you do not click on them anymore. So we're going to position these in a nice way. And now we're going to do something I couldn't do last year. And I was kind of bummed out about it, but our computers just weren't powerful enough. And usually when you're done your, a project, you want to render it. What rendering means is you take these awesome 3D cubes and you make them look professional. You make them look impressive. So in order to do that, we're going to head on over to the tab that is called View, located over here. And then we're going to do a few things. First of all, we're going to, let's say, give it some shadows so we could go to all shadows. And you'll notice that it's casting a shadow right now, which, which is kind of cool. And maybe we'll keep it, maybe we won't. Uh, alternatively, in the shadows option, we can go over to settings. And we have a maximum of four lights in Inventor. So if we activate these lights, you'll notice that the parts, whoops, I can't click away. You'll notice that the parts can get very bright or very dark based on which lights I activate. And the lights are positioned, if this is our project, the lights are positioned in the axes based on this over here. So if you wanted to move it around the X or the Y or the, or, I don't know where the other one is. Uh, you should be able to alter it using these settings. For a project as simple as this, we're not going to focus on the lights so much. We'll talk about all this later. But usually, three lights activated should give you a pretty nice, pretty bright project. So make sure you have three lights activated. And then go ahead and click Done. Uh, save edits, yes. And I've done all this without touching those cubes. If you would like, you can mess around with the reflections or just click on reflections. And you'll notice that it creates a reflection of the parts. Uh, I don't like that, so I'm going to turn it off. The parts, there we go, something like that. I actually don't like the shadows either. So I'm going to turn off the shadows, maybe object shadow, ambient shadow. I'm going to leave on ambient shadows, but I'm going to turn off ground shadows because they don't really make sense for this. But if you want to leave them on because they look awesome, go ahead and do that. So I have my amazing shapes. They're already looking really nice. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to switch our visual style to realistic. So click on that, switch it to realistic, and it'll look the same. And now we're going to render it. And to render it, you have to click on this option here called Ray Tracing. And now it's going to render our project. And it's rendering it there. Uh, it looks OK. I'm actually going to cancel that. And I'm going to 
change our background because a gray background kind of looks a little bit lame. So in order to change the background, head over to the Manage tab. It's not under the Manage tab anymore. I guess it's under Tools now. Head over to the Tools tab. Go over to Application Options. Click on that. And switch over to the Colors tab. And these are colors that are preloaded into the program. So find a color that you like. I'm going to choose sky because sky looks pretty nice. And then click apply. And it's going to change the background of your program. Once that's done, head back over to view. Go back to ray tracing. Activate that by clicking on it. And now let's switch the rendering from interactive to best. And what BEST is going to do is it's going to make the best rendering possible. So it's rendering right now, and even at just a 2-3% rendering, this is already looking amazing. Now you'll understand why we didn't do this last year if you looked at the task manager of any computer. Right now it's using 100% of my CPU, and I'm running a quad-core system, 3 gigahertz and it is just destroying my computer right now. So on last year's computers, which were pretty basic, we cannot render. So let the rendering go on for a little bit, maybe, I don't know, five, six, or however much percent you can get. The longer this goes for, the more, the more realistic this is going to look. However, since we're just doing cubes and nothing too, too extravagant, they're gonna look relatively the same. So right now I'm feeling pretty good about this. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take a screenshot of this for your website. So on the keyboard, click on the print screen. Uh, click that we did previously. It's on the keyboard, upper right. Press that. It'll take a snapshot. Go into paint. Paste it in paint. And then use the select tool to select it all and then you can just create a new paint file and just paste it again so you only have the parts there. And now just think about it, when you put this on your website it's going to look amazing. So that's one awesome rendering. Go ahead and save that into your folder. So go to File, Save As, and save it into your folder. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this rendering because that's all I needed it for. Okay, now I'm going to click on one of these pieces and I'm going to try to move it and boom, the cube popped back together. Remember when I said the cube was in an unstable form? It was. Now do the same thing again. Position the cube in a nice isometric way and activate ray tracing again and it's going to render the cube for you. Let it go for a little bit And once it's around 10 to 15 percent, do the same thing. Take a screenshot of it, open up Paint, paste it in Paint. So you're going to have two screenshots, one of your parts and one of the cube. And we probably should get one last screenshot after you've done those two. Go ahead and reopen up your explosion file. That's going to look something like this. Now you cannot render it in an explosion, however position it so that any viewer could obviously see what is going on in your project. Take a screenshot of this, open up a new paint file, and paste it in paint. This is going to be your third and final image. So we're actually going to have one more video to wrap this up and upload it to your websites, because this one's already exceeding 19.